But we could probably come up with a theme song for that channel, right? Yeah, uh, I think I, I know a good tune for it. I think I know a good tune for it, yeah. Well, this is exciting, guys. It's always cool to learn a little bit more about really? these runners to kind of, you know, get get a little bit of background on them and learn a little bit more about what they're up to in the background. They're not just CAD guys. They're also amateur rally drivers, and they're also instructors at university. And uh, it's, it's just really cool to get a chance to meet these guys a little bit and learn a little bit more. But the niceties have to come to an end because now it's time to battle. So we're going to get into it here with this first battle. We got Ex Machina from Greece. We got Crispy Co. from Australia. Alibre versus SolidWorks. This first CAD battle begins in three, two, one, go. What is the mass of this part in XXXX grams? The tolerance is plus or minus three grams. This part is called coupling. If you're out there watching, grab a screen capture so that you can play along with. Both of our runners are already grabbing a screen capture, already getting into their CAD system, so we don't want to miss any of the action here. This part is 1060 aluminum. It's called coupling. Let's take a look and see how they approach this 3D CAD challenge. So we see we've got Crispy Co. on the right. Crispy Co. looks to be using solid works and kind of creating a layout of this thing looking down from the end. And we've got Ex Machina on the left using a Libre. He looks like he's going to approach this thing with that kind of slotted shape first. And wow, look how quickly he was able to get that slot in there and fully defined. That is impressive. Yeah, adding in the holes in the initial sketch too. Yeah, an interesting approach. Sometimes you know, usually, that ends up... I save those for last, but... Yeah, sometimes that can end up biting you. Yeah. Oh, and it looks like maybe he was listening to us and, and changed oh. his approach. <laughs> Maybe I should uh, not give away my trade secrets. Well, I mean, I think that that's not only a trade secret for you, but for a lot of people, because sometimes you want to overlap into the solid. And so you want to leave those cuts, you know, for the end. So you leave yourself that flexibility to overlap. Uh, but uh, these guys are both pros. I think that they're probably both so zoned in. We, we probably couldn't say anything to distract them. I'd hope not. Aaron C in the chat says, oh, boy, this is the kind of part I'm bad at. Nothing crazy, <laughs> just a lot of features. Love seeing the two approaches. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm just really looking at the Alibre interface and seeing kind of the, like, almost like a thin extrude is what Ex Machina is doing for this bottom shape. Yeah. Like this, this half round. And that's always a, a good, you know, an in, a good and interesting approach when, when you've got something like this where you've got kind of like a common yeah. channel running through the center of the part. Is it possible to just thin extrude? We see Tayfun in the chat, who's also a fellow Alibre user, uh, who's saying, yeah, thin extrude. We're going to see him in the tournament a little bit later running Alibre. Yeah. Yeah, personally, I would have done like a full revolve almost for that uh, top shape. And then, you know, with the slot extruded and then cut away from there. I, I really like the approach of just building a big block of material and then like almost subtractively manufacturing from there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Almost like the machinist approach. Isn't it interesting that when, when 3D printing came around, the term additive manufacturing was kind of born and then yeah. and then like Re like m traditional like, machine. We, we gotta refer to this old way of doing things somehow <laughs> yeah. too. Yeah, we're not gonna call it the old way. We're gonna call it subtractive manufacturing, which almost sounds worse. Like it almost sounds like you're losing something by doing it that way. So mm. I just like calling it cutting chips. Yeah, which is which is also funny. Like I, my brain when I'm doing CAD thinks of things in like the subtractive manufacturing way, but I have five 3d printers in my room and <laughs> that's like my primary method of manufacturing these right days, so. right you're yeah. thinking it would just naturally default to that yeah so we see Ex Machina on the left here, kind of uh, trying to figure out what he's going to do with the back end of this part. It's kind of cool. The back end of this part is um, is solid, but does have a little bit of a almost a counter bore in it. It's got a little pocket in the back end. Uh, we see Crispy Co. though. It's right there, hot on his heels. I th it looked like Ex Machina was really pulling ahead, but once Crispy Co. changed his view there, I realized they are neck and neck. Mm-hmm. See how yeah, the, interest, the other interesting thing I'm seeing with the Libre is it's almost like you have to keep track of which direction your axes are going. Like in all these extrusions, you're double checking, okay, am I extruding plus Y, negative Y, you know, you know, having to switch back and forth almost. 
Yeah, that's an interesting just, uh, observation. Yeah, instead of it just yeah. being like, a, you know, how SolidWorks does it more of like a positive polarity, negative polarity. It's more about like the absolute X, Y. Yeah. Interesting. It can be really helpful sometimes. There's There's been a lot of cases where you go to offset a plane um, and then you forget to flip normal. And then you're like, oh, well, now I have to you know switch the directions on all my bosses and cuts. Uh, right. Yeah. Especially if your software, like one of the softwares I use at work, it doesn't have the option to switch or to flip your normals on your planes. Oh, wow. So just all the downstream processes, you have to, you know, you're always switching directions. They totally get flipped. It's always yeah. the opposite of default. Yeah. Need. Well, these guys definitely are close. We see that X Machina on the left is putting in those holes on kind of the back of the model. But Crispy Co is also at almost the same time working on that same feature getting those holes yeah. there in the back of the model. So cool to see two two experts in their in their CAD system battling it out like this. Uh, looks like we see... Oh, are we seeing a, our favorite feature? A delete face? Let's go. Good to know that Alibre has that too. Yeah. I like how you and I both perked up when that happened. Like, <laughs> I think somebody's using... I'm like, oh, those, those holes went a little far. I yeah. don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, everybody gets excited when Delete Face happens. Uh, that was almost one of my custom icons for the uh, for the new membership was Delete Face. It still might be. It's, it's definitely in the running. All right, Ex Machina coming in with an answer. Two, six, eight, seven grams. And that is correct. So a huge shout out to Ex Machina. Great job there. Super fast. Look at Crispy Co. Look how look at Crispy Co coming in with his answer. 2868 grams. Also correct and within the tolerance. So they just came in one after the other. I mean, what was the delta there? Like 20 seconds from one to the other, maybe not even. Wow. Yeah, I mean, both of the timestamps show the exact same time of 1031. Wow, <laughs> guys, that was super <laughs> so close. Seconds apart. Man, what a close matchup. Wow, wow, wow. Congratulations to Ex Machina and uh, super impressive from Crispy Co. as well. And always fun seeing those close matches. That one, though, yikes. They're usually not quite that close. That was, that was awesome. That was awesome, guys. Well, GG to the winner. Guys, put a GG.